Imagine if you had a child, you found out they had an ultra rare disease and you don't have any therapy that you can go to the pharmacy and say, I, I need this drug to help my child live. And you had a, one chance at that for the very first time, how much you would fight tooth and nail for that. Especially if your child were able to take that through a trial or through compassionate use and you finally see them living a life. They're out of the hospital. Imagine if you were in those parents' shoes. Emily Milligan is the executive director for the Bart Syndrome Foundation and is leading a group of parents and those affected by the illness to get FDA approval for a drug that helps those with the ultra-rare disease. Bart Syndrome is an ultra-rare genetic disorder. It affects around 150 Americans and their families. It affects the body from the head to the toes. Primarily, it impairs the heart's functioning, the immune system, musculoskeletal system, GI, it's, it affects the whole body. And unfortunately, we don't have any approved therapies for Bar syndrome, so it tends to be highly fatal or life-limiting. You know, it, it was my life for 19 years. I barely had enough energy to get through the day until I started the drug in August of 2017, and it has changed my life forever. All of the symptoms associated with BAR are, are gone. Fatigue, strength, quality of life. So those are the three things that really affect. I found out Jalen was diagnosed with Barth syndrome in pregnancy. I had an amniocentesis done around 23 weeks pregnant and they found out through the results of the amniocentesis that he had Barth syndrome. We have a long family history of Barth syndrome. My mom's biological father had Barth syndrome, but he didn't have like the debilitating effects of Barth syndrome. He then passed it on to my mom as being a carrier. My mom did have a son, Jonathan, and he passed away from Barth syndrome in 2004. Jordan remembers seeing her brother die when he was just 18 months old. So in one month time, my son will be the same age my brother was when he passed, and it's scary. Being a parent to a child with Barth syndrome, it's challenging. You have to stay on top of their health, their appearance. You have to look for, you know, signs and symptoms that most parents wouldn't even think to, like, know that that was a sign or symptom of heart failure. I think the most heartbreaking thing that I had to learn was having to learn CPR on my son before taking him home from the hospital. The challenging issues we face with feeding, often, you know, others take for granted, like, oh, you know, my kid so, you know, feeds great, he eats great. My son has had several issues. He's had feeding tubes, he's had, you know, he's on five different medications daily, multiple times a day. So it's, it's challenging. Barth syndrome was discovered by Dutch scientist Dr. Peter Barth late last century. The illness affects less than 200 Americans and just an additional 300 people worldwide. So it primarily affects males. It, women can carry uh, the gene that can be passed on to their sons. It can also happen de novo in utero. Commonly, it is passed down generations to generations, and uh, that, that's hard for our moms in particular. Those in America with the illness and those with loved ones battling the disease were given hope in the last decade with an experimental drug called elamipreptide. So elamipreptide is a drug, it's administered subcutaneous, so it's a shot under the skin, and it is targeting the mitochondria. So the mitochondria, if you go back to biology in high school or middle school, you might remember that this is the powerhouse of the cell. It's what makes our cells have the energy to raise our hands and do the activities of our life to even think um, for our hearts to function properly. And so when bar syndrome, the mitochondria kind of look like a blob. They, they lose that cylinder structure and they get this different shape. That shape means that the mitochondria can't work effectively because the chemistry of the, the electricity of that does not work right. So this drug, what it does is it takes that kind of globular look and gives it back its shape. By giving it back its shape, it works better. 
it helps restore the energy, the fatigue, and they noticed that it was restoring function of the heart as well. It's a miracle. It's life-changing. My son is not the only one that has been safe with it. Back then, when, when someone asked me, you know, would, do you, would you like to go work out? Or when they when they talked about you know, working out, I would literally look at them like they were crazy. Like, how do you enjoy working out? How do you have enough energy to go work out? And now, working out, I work out, you know, every other day for at least an hour, and it is the highlight of my day. While the drug has seemed to work wonders for those using it, in October 2024, those on it testified before the FDA to explain how their lives changed because of it. Sadly, a stunning blow to those on the medication came in August 2025, when FDA has refused their request to reconsider the Element Preptide new drug application and have asked the makers of the drug, Stealth Biotherapeutics, to resubmit for a third time, prolonging the process. However, funding for the drug at Stealth Biotherapeutics is running out rapidly. Inside Edition Digital has reached out to Stealth Biotherapeutics for comment, and in a statement they said, quote, The FDA's recent decision to require a third new drug application resubmission, adding another six months to the process, would mean more than 24 months of review for a data set of just 12 patients, which an advisory committee already found provided substantial evidence for full approval. Without more immediate action from the FDA, we cannot ensure continued drug availability to this vulnerable community or our sustainability as a company. At this time, we are evaluating all options, end quote. His cardiology team and I have already talked about the possibility of it being taken away from us. And... Um, they did mention that we would probably have to go back to the life we begged to escape at one point because we would have to be seen so frequently for more monitoring um, just to see the toll it's going to take on him. To go back to that life would be the worst, worst day of my life. I mean, as I have told people, the day that we get our answer, it will be the best day or the worst day of my life. And it's all in their hands. And they, they have the power to, to control all of our lives. Honestly, for some, they have the power to determine if people live. I uh, will lose the access to the drug. I go back to my uh, my horrible life. And I would have wished I never did this. Those who suffer from Bart syndrome are urging people to help. I would say to the public that we need their help. Reach out to, you know, your Congress members in your state. Encourage them to urge the FDA to approve Elamipertide. We cannot do this alone. And my son is living, breathing proof that not only does it work, but it is effective and safe.